I was going to go in for the whole hat and quotes from the film and stuff like that. Possibly even start with a glass of water just trembling on the edge of the table. But I decided to dispense with any such tricks and trivia. You're all far too refined and shrewd for that kind of thing. Jurassic Park, Danger Adventure Strategy Game is one that I have wanted from the moment I became aware that it existed. And it did seem quite hard to track down here for a while. And then lo and behold, I walk into Waterstones and there it is sitting on the shelf. And of course, once I found it in Waterstones, I then proceeded to find it in other places. Mm. Not everywhere. Not everywhere will stress. Um, if I'd wanted this in the States or that, no problem. If I wanted it in the UK, oh, there it is. It's it's on Zatu and things like that there. So not impossible to get. I think it's on Amazon as well. But it was one of those things that when I wanted it there and then, it was hard to find. Shh. <sighs> Don't rain on my enjoyment parade here okay um another prospero hall so this one under the 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 brand of of raven's burger so no not a jigsaw they do make games lots of games as it turns out but the prospero hall people have kind of got me excited about silly little fun games um after the funko pop stuff which you know we looked at funko pop there's a couple of videos links at the end of this um sort of went these will be crap and they weren't. They were awesome. Uh, and if you don't believe us, if you like things like the Judge Dredd, Helter Skelter, that whole Wildlands thing, you're going to like the Funko Pops uh, games. Um, so do, 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 do check them out. Jurassic Park, though. It's 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 Jurassic Park. Um, I have to say that there's a good likelihood I would have bought this, much like the Jaws game. Again, Ravensburger. Again, Prospero Hall. Um, it did not disappoint. The Jaws game's class. We just love it to pieces. Did we do a video on that? I don't remember. We maybe didn't, you know. We are bound to have, didn't we? Uh, I'll have to check. It's not like we keep a record of these things. It's not the first time we've done a video and discovered that we already had one up. Anyway, I digress. Um, so, yeah. Been looking forward to it and looking forward to it and looking forward to it and there it is it's now in hand if you're familiar with the jaws game there's there's a sort of similarity here which is why this one appealed so we've got the island the island gets built out of hexagon tiles so it's kind of a little bit different uh, every time we have character cards the characters all have cards that allow them to do certain actions at a time then they exhaust them then they have to refresh or rest to get those cards back We've got somebody in charge of the dinosaurs. They get three dinosaurs to play with. And like Jaws, they've got cards that allow them to do cool stuff as well. And when they're exhausted, they rest and get them back. Locations for you to get to and do things. Goals, objectives that you have to complete before you can escape. Cliffs to climb, mudslides to slide down, electric fences to scramble through, turn on, turn off, all kinds of stuff like that there. And there you go, $24.99 in Waterstones. We got this particular one in Waterstones, Coleraine, so a little shout out to them. Thank you very much indeed. And glad that we were able to throw some money into a local business uh, that is helping uh, its own little neighbourhood. Quite a few board games up in the Coleraine branch, actually, so worth a little look, say. So, what's in the box? Cool stuff. Okay, so everything, actually let's move the box down and let's just do this out. So everything was bagged up. I've, I have to say, I've already been in this. Okay, I wanted I wanted to be happy with this and I couldn't wait. Normally I can kind of wait to get cellophane off and all before I throw these things down the table in front of you lot. For I like to think of it as a more honest approach. If I'm excited about it, then great, and if I'm not, or one of the other guys, I'll give it to one of the other guys to be excited about it. But I'm excited, it doesn't matter. So nicely, everything sealed up, comes in its own bag, deck sealed up there as well. And then we've got our little meeples, we've got our dinosaur meeples, and we've got a dice. And the box has a reasonable enough storage tray it is only cardboard in this one it's a little bit bent out of shape in there a little bit rough and ready probably 
durable enough because it's not like there's a huge weight of components in this one, okay? But nice that it's got the logo and whatnot on it there too. So, just to sort of take us through these pieces, I'm going to start with the, the little dinosaur meebles because I think they're kind of cute. Um, so you get the three. They've got that kind of animal upon animal, an <laughs> animal upon animal dinosaur game would be kind of cute. Uh, but that kind of lovely shiny finish to them. Uh, they're big, they're chunky. You can see in the, my hand there, they're not tiny little meeples. And you've got three different types of dinosaur, each with uh, kind of quirky little actions that they can carry out. So if you're the dinosaur player, yay, you get multiple things to control. Um, they've all got their little copyright logo things on them. Their names would have been more useful. We all know the T-Rex. Um, so that's the dinosaurs. The meeples are just meeples, okay? It's it's just standard kind of meeple things, little wooden people, and that's fair enough. All your favourite colours. The dice isn't anything weird or special or right home about. Black dice, red dots. Some people seem to care about this sort of stuff. It's very shiny though. That's I suppose I suppose it's a nice D6 as D6 go. It's it's I think it's wooden. And it rolls. That everyone we need to know about the dice. Happy. So character cards. Now the way this works is depending on the number of players that you've got, everyone will get a character card. You can dish them out randomly, but they do suggest that you look through them and kind of pick the good ones to start the game, your your first couple of games. Um X number, depending on the number of players, X number of survivors have to make it out off the island in the helicopter pad, okay? But more than that can play. Um, and the idea is that some people might sort of be self-sacrificing and uh, use distraction skills and stuff to help others escape the island. If you do get munched though, you draw another unplayed character from the pile, get the meeple and take up their starting position and crack on. So you're not out of the game. Everyone can play on the dinosaurs, a bit like Jaws game. Dinosaurs have to munch a certain number of people in order for them to win. But we'll come to all that in due course here. So the card cards, okay, They're, they are papery cards. That's, that's a little bit disappointing. I would have liked stiff cardstock. It's nice that they've got the logo on the back. Was sort of looking at this earlier and thought, wouldn't it have been class if this had been like a VIP visitor's pass since it's the first guest? Thought that was a wee missed trick on their part graphically, but there we go. So, um, Dr. Ellie uh, Sattler, I'd like to stay with Dr. Harding and finish with the tr uh, trick. Tr finish with the trike? I don't know. I thought that she said trick. I don't know. Anyway. I digress. Carter goals. So this is what she needs to complete in order for her to be el eligible for making for the helicopter. Go to the Triceratops location and collect Dr. Ellie Sattler's uh, gold token. So the bell token on the map if she's playing and you have to get it. Get it onto your card and go. Uh, play your card here. Burn cards over here and discard pile over here. Cool. Dr. Ian Malcolm, everyone's favorite. Everybody loves him. Uh, before uh, you roll, guess whether the die will be even or odd. <sighs> Trying to do his voice, it's not gonna work. Um, if correct, collect Dr. Ian Malcolm's gold token. That, that, could, that could be so annoying, chaos theory. Boy, do I hate being right all the time. <laughs> Ah, John Hammond himself. Okay, card to call. You begin with John Hammond's gold token. Discard the token of any other character is eliminated while John Hammond is in play. Ooh, creation is an act of sheer will. Next time, it'll be flawless. Lex Murphy, the annoying kids. Uh, card to call. Go to the control center location to collect Lex Murphy's gold token. Okay, cool. Ah, Tim Murphy, brother. Goal, card goal. Go to the uh, Brachiosaurus location to collect Tim Murphy's goal. They only eat vegetables, but for you, I think they'd make an exception. Ah <laughs> oh, man, Ray Arnold, class. 
Carter Gold go to the maintenance shed location and collect Ray Arnold's gold token. Three minutes, they're going to power back on the entire park. Donald Gennaro. You begin with Donald's gold token. Discard the token if Donald is attacked. Okay. So a nice mix already of, of whether they've got it or to get it. Uh, Robert Muldoon. Distract the Raptor to collect Robert Muldoon's gold token. Uh, what have we got there? Dennis Needy. Needry. Isn't it Needry? Yeah. Nedry? I always end up. I run a file on names all the time. And like the number of times I've watched this too, but there we go. Anyway, it's all right until you have to read the thing read down. I could edit it. We could edit this and fix it, but who cares? You don't, and nor will the three people watching. Um, card to gold. You begin with Dennis's gold token. Dennis must always be chosen as the target for attacks. Oh, that's not going to be a fun one to play. Well, it might be a fun one to play. And there he is, Dr. Alan Grant. Look at him. Look, look at that hat. Look at the size of that hat. That seems to be humongous. Distract the Tyrannosaurus Rex to collect Dr. Alan Grant's gold token. Don't move. He can't see us if we don't move. Do you know what? In reality, I would never, ever want to put that to the test. They were guessing all this stuff would be dinosaurs. And then the dinosaur uh, sheet. So the Solaraptor move up to two spaces in a straight line. Tyrannosaurus Rex attack one character twice. Dilphosaurus attack one character in an adjacent space. Ooh. What we look at next? Uh, cards. We look at cards. Now I think if I've kind of got this in my head right from from what I've read already is that most of these are going to boil down to just uh, character uh, sets. So you're going to have action cards that you'll play out. There'll be a set for everybody, and there'll be a set for the dinosaurs as well. So I'm not expecting and fancy. I'm just kind of interested to know what we're going to see artwork-wise here. Uh, character cards, I think we can tell by the back of this already, that they're going to have the same character picture, which is a shame, but nice to have it. Uh, another bit of artwork from the, the movie in it. Um, but let's see. It's the sort of thing, hopefully if this is if this is sort of successful and supported and people like it, uh, we might get to see more Jurassic Park board games come out. So yeah, everyone's got their own little uh, deck of cards with their character picture on the back. And I imagine largely we are probably going to see the same... Um, the same actions for everyone, would you think? It's going to be a case of how you use them. Of course, everybody's going to be framing one of those or taking these to events to get them signed. Yeah, you could do that too. Perfect picks for signing. This is where somebody put the comments, yeah, except, you know, so-and-so is dead and so-and-so doesn't do events and all that. But you know what I mean, folks? You could do it. And the dino deck there as well. So what are we getting here? Run, run, run. Sneak, roll three plus. Climb, roll five plus. So you can, you can play the card to do a thing, but still not succeed. Climb, roll 5+, plus, distract, free action, play during a human's turn. The magic word, discard this card to activate or deactivate one electric fence. Okay, cool. Magic word, electric fence. So let's see, does that, that was Dennis's deck. Let's try Alan's and see, is it just the same? Run, 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 climb 3+, plus, climb 3+, plus, distract, sneak, Oh, no, give me your hand. Discard this card, move one character from the adjacent space into your space. Okay, so let's see what everybody else is going to offer us then. Ellie, run, 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 distract, climb, three plus again. Sneak, or sneak's different as well. Okay, sneak four plus in this one. 
Dino Droppings. Discard this card. Another card in your space may return two cards from the discard pile into their hand. Nice. Okay, so there's... We're already starting to see there's going to be a little bit more strategy in who you pick for this. That's, that's a little bit better than I was expecting. Um, so we've got run, 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 climb three plus, climb three plus, sneak three plus. Slightly better at it. Distract. Another distract. Did everyone else get two? We're being hunted. Discard this card. Move one character into your space from an adjacent space. Okay. What about the kids? Let's check out let's check out Tim here. Run, 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 climb four plus, climb four plus, sneak two plus. So his climbs harder, his sneaks a lot easier than we've seen so far. And I think uh, yeah, he's got an extra sneak, doesn't he? It feels like two cards are very tightly stuck. Oh, they are stuck. I read your book. Discard this card after the dinosaur player selects their card. They must reveal the card they've selected. Nice. So I tell you, that's this is nice because so far there seems to be an awful lot of thought in representing what these characters were kind of good at and new into this uh, as well. Which for a lot of games, I think that's, that's a nice touch of effort there. Run, run. He should only get like two runs. Surely, surely Hammond couldn't run the same as everybody else. Run. Climbs hard for him. And I'm going to guess Sneak is too. Yeah, not easy at all. No expense spared. Discard this card. Add plus two to another character's roll. Hmm. Self-sacrifice. Fair enough. That's, that's nice. What about our... Control room friend. Run, run. Climbs three again, so fairly average there. A couple of distracts. Sneaks average two. Hold on to your butts. Discard this card while at the control center, visitor center, or maintenance shed to enable or disable the electric fences. Okay. Run, run, run. Climb, not great. Well, not you know, average again. Roll three. Run away. Burn this card. When a dinosaur attacks your space, move to an adjacent space instead of being attacked. Free action play during the dinosaur's turn. Mm. Okay. Run, run, run. Climb, climb, climb. Snake, snake. Piercing scream. Burn this card. Roll a four plus to sneak and distract without being attacked. Okay, fair enough. That's fairly accurate again as well. And what about himself then? What about Malcolm? Ian Malcolm. Run, run, run. Distract. Climb, climb. Sneak, sneak. Chaos Theory, okay. Discard this card. Any one character may return one card at random from their discard pile to their hand. That could be so good or so bad. And he can do that twice. And that's not a burn card either. He doesn't have to burn that to do that. He gets that card back when he rests then. Ooh. Nice. Gotta say, really, really happy with those. Card stock wise, I, I was that distracted by actually looking at what they were that I never even paid attention. It's a fairly, fairly standard middle of the road kind of card stock going on with those. So that's okay. Um, Bob's gonna love this. I think I will sleeve these just because they are a little bit more fragile than some of the more recent cards that I've, I've come through my hands. I think I would give in and sleeve those uh, because I imagine you're going to be cycling those quite a lot, playing them quite a lot, and uh, a little bit of wear and tear. So, sleeving job, Bob. And the dinosaurs. So, we've got run, 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 run and climb, run and climb, run and climb, run and climb, run and sneak, run and sneak, climb, climb, and run, run, run. 
So my take from this is, and this is I've only cursorily looked at the, the, the rule book, you can activate two dinosaurs, you can allocate what they do, one can run, one can climb, blah blah blah, and in this one you've got three runs, or possibly you can allocate that to a single dinosaur. We'll need to double check the fine print on that one. Okay, cards wise, like it, very happy with those. Um, yeah, I think nice, nice pictures, nice arrangement of skills, and they kind of come across as sounding like they're trying to get them to do stuff that their characters would have done in the film, and that's a nice touch. We'll, uh, well, we don't really need to open the tokens here. We can just bring them up here for a little bit of a look-see uh, so that you can see what's going on there. So we have the electric fence tokens. We've got some dinosaur tokens. We've got the player tokens that they have to collect or already have. We've got the helicopter, the control center, visitor center, and the maintenance shed. These are all dulled, or these are all color, dulled out and colored. The dulled out side means that they're off. The coloured side means that you've visited them and that they are now active. Okay. And uh, yeah, okay. A little bit of a bend there. It's been sort of shrink packed very, very tightly. Reasonable looking thickness of cardstock for it. But I can see the last couple of bits of fence there are a little bit sort of just bent. But they pop out. So the board might be bent, but the tokens are probably going to be fine. There might be a little bit looking at it here, a little bit of a curve uh, on the buildings, but hopefully that's something that we can flatten out and deal with that. So even with my best effort in this situation, I can't get it all on camera. I can't physically get the camera any higher uh, where we're set up at the minute to, to bring this in. So we're missing, we're missing a little bit down here. And we're missing a little bit over there. Okay, but you are seeing the largest part of the play area, and you're seeing the helicopter pad. There's the three required escapees. We've got the visitor center up here, we've got the maintenance shed over here, we've got the control room over there, and then obviously we have this bunch of tiles. Okay, so we've got perimeter tiles, we've got center tiles, and the start tile. Okay, so the start tile always goes in the middle. And then the center tiles are shuffled up and they are randomly distributed around this. Ooh, come back. Okay, and then same again is done with the perimeter tiles and they're randomly put around. I think probably looking at it, logos are maybe supposed to go to the bottom. I don't know. I don't know if it I don't, I can check that. As I say, I've only glanced through the rule book. Oh, there's a dinosaur symbol. I, I like it. I'm liking this. I like the, the visual of it. It's really, don't know if it's coming across for you, so it's really nice and bright and just it just kind of feels chunky. It's like Jurassic Settlers of Catan or something like that there. Oh, pop that off. My little surface that I'm working on here is not actually very even. The, the mat's kind of hiding a multitude of sins underneath itself. So these all do fit snug, but it's just what I've got it all resting on at the moment is not uh, is not helping us. So, but yeah, okay, you can you can kind of see the gist of that there. Oh wait, I never actually talked about the rule book. Like let's let's very quickly do the rule book because none of you probably care about it in the slightest if you're even still there. Um, so instructions. This is not a hefty instruction book by any stretch of the imagination. Ages ten and up, two to five players. They're saying fifty minutes of game time. So that's that's pretty nice uh, for the price point of the game. That's pretty decent. The fact it can do two players, the fact it can go up to five, I think that's all right. And for what I'm seeing of the quality of the pieces here, 
Yeah, that's 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 bang on. I'm happy with that. 110 cards, 10 character decks, one dinosaur deck, 11 player mats, 10 character mats, one dinosaur mat, 19 island tiles, five perimeter frames, 10 character movers, three dinosaur movers, because uh, they're not allowed to call them movers, probably. Uh, 13 fences, 19 tokens, one die, and the instructions. Goal, dinosaur player must eliminate three characters to win. Human player must work together as a team to achieve to activate the locations and achieve their character goals and make it to the helicopter to win. Note, because characters can escape or be eliminated mid-game, a human player may start the game as one character and then may play a different character later in the game. Okay, so that's the general gist of it. So there's, there's our setup diagram. I don't know why I still keep going to turn that around as if I'm going to show it to somebody else. Uh, these instructions contain information for the dinosaur player and the human players. Red is to inform the dinosaur player. Blue is to inform the human players. When you see this information, sign information applies to all players. And they've just they've identified it in two halves as well. It's not just dependent on colour. You can see clearly that they've divided it and given it as title as well for dinosaur setup and player setup. So it doesn't matter whatever tile goes in the visitor center, the maintenance shed, and the control center location. Any tile can end up there. You'll be placing the physical token to represent those. So uh, we'll not worry about those. For There's the helicopter part. The helicopter. Um, so I suppose it maybe doesn't go down until probably actually tells you. Control center will be over there. Visitor center will be up here, and the maintenance shed will be over here. Why did they not build these things close together? Um, place all the R tokens and die beside the game board. Decide who will play as the dinosaurs and who will play as the characters. The Triceratops and Brontosaurus are not dinosaurs that the dinosaur player will control during the game. These are spaces that certain characters will need to visit to achieve their goals. So we've got one there and one there down there. There's no tokens for those. Grey is a deactivated electrical fence and then if you activate them you get to put that down which shows that it's now live. Uh, these symbols are the cliffs so it's just like um, it's just like a little rock fall really. And that's that's pretty much all the symbols dealt with. Wow, okay, cool. The tiles are, are really nice. I've got to say there's like the little jeep abandoned in the river here. There's kind of bits of the ruins and um, there's definitely swamps now. There's no jeep. Um, one of the, the sort of like the temple shop thing going on. Um, we've got little dinosaurs running through here and there's one swimming over in the lake and things. Different plants and stuff. And there's footprints running through some of them as well. So yeah, it uh, it does look the part. So they all have, oh, that's not good, look at that. That didn't fall well for people. So the T-Rex is gonna start over here, here, over there. I suppose if I lay them face down, you'll see them better on camera maybe. Right, so they get their little starting homes. Okay, that's, that's nice. Uh, dinosaurs may start on a space with a location tile or a card or goal token, so they can start on them. You can literally end up with dinosaurs already starting in the positions where you're going to be um, playing and uh, doing all your bits and pieces. So that's that's a tight one, uh, potentially. Human setup. Each human player chooses a starting character for more of a challenge. Draw them randomly. As we've seen, that's probably not wise for your first couple of games. Um, place your character mat in front of you. Take all of your character's cards from your hand. All characters are available to human players at the start of the game. Place your character's mover on their start tile. They all start there with the broken down jeep. Where you will dump your peoples. I'm going to call them peoples. So how do humans win? 
To win, the human players work together as a team, activate the locations, the maintenance shed, the control center, and the visitor center, get a specific number of characters to the helicopter with their gold tokens in order to escape. Once the location is activated, its effects remain in play for the rest of the game. So what do these locations do for you? I wonder. The control center, when activated, uh, place lock tokens on the maintenance shed, control center, visitor center, and helicopter pad. The dinosaurs can no longer enter there. So that is... The little locky tokens. Don't know why I'm showing you that there. Should be showing you that there. That's the little locky tokens there. Dinosaur is no longer allowed. You not allowed in there now, boys. Um, the dinosaur is at one of the locations when the lock's placed on it. It's relocated to an adjacent space of the human player's choice. This still applies to dinosaurs who are sneaking, and this can force a dinosaur to cross over cliffs and deactivate electric deactivate electric fences. If a dinosaur is at a location that's surrounded by an activated electric fence, it is not relocated. Main and Shed, when activated, decide as a team if you want all the electrical fences in Jurassic Park to be turned on. If you do, place the electric fence token over every electric fence with a greyed out symbol on the game board to indicate the electric fences are now on. It's all or none. Dead your goals, get to the helicopter. Once all three locations are activated, the helicopter token is placed onto the helicopter pad and your character must be able to make it to the helicopter with their goal token to escape. If your character escapes, place your mover on the safe area below the helicopter. Return your character mount and card to the box. They will not be used again in this game. Select a new character. They want you to play with somebody else. They want you to survive again. Um, so it's a matter of attacking humans and stuff like that there. More about moving dinosaurs and characters, dinosaur stacks. Just so you can sort of get a look here. With it. We started with the rule book and then started placing stuff just to sort of show you. The rule book is very, very visual. Um, there's not a whole pile and pile and pile of words. It's fairly straightforward. This is a fairly low complexity game with a couple of little sort of tricks and nuances to it. Uh, knowing when to play your cards, learning when to play your cards, and working together as a team is going to be vital or you can do the shafty 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 try and make it out your own type thing select new card to replenish your hand there we go that's like that's 11 pages 11 not not even well yeah it is even it's it's exactly 11 pages 12 if you count this bit which is advice so there you go um I gotta say, I, I just really like, look at this, we're very happy with the Jaws game, it's a lot of fun, it only does uh, four players, up to four players, um, whereas this we can go we can go the whole hog, go to five. You probably could, because there's the character sheets and the cards, you probably could put more players in, but I think the humans are going to get it probably far too easy at that rate of going um, against a mere three dinosaurs, unless you can get more dinosaur tokens. That might be fun. We haven't even got playing it properly as it is. Shh, stop coming up with stupid ideas like that, people at home. Leave us alone. So there you go. That is what's inside the box. And and pretty much, to be honest, pretty much how it plays. It's it's not rocket science. Card, play a card, do the move. Boom, on you go. Some moves are sneaky, some are not. Um, so yeah, this... It is, it is by no means one of the more complicated games that we have played. This is this is quite a simple, straightforward game. I think, I think actually Jaws is possibly a little bit more complex uh, with that sort of hidden movement guessing thing going on against the shark and it munching NPCs all the time. It's not really after the players as such. Um, but yeah, it's nice. It looks the part. If you're a fan... It's got Jurassic Park slapped all over it and loads of pictures. So, you know, it's good merc, if nothing else. I think we're going to have a lot of fun playing this. I could see this one being popular as a wee filler game quite a few times uh, before people will start to, to tire of it. So there you go. Jurassic Park, Ravensburger, Prospero Hall. Check it out. It's, it's a gift for that kind of price, to be honest. For what you're getting in there, I think it's an absolute song. So uh, let us know if you've got it ready, if you've played it, what you think of it, if you enjoy it, uh, or if you track it down after this, great. Give us a shout out. Let us know how you get on with it. Send us a picture with you playing your Jurassic Park, possibly in the fancy hat. That would be impressive. And uh, thanks again, as ever, if you have the time.
click the little button, hit subscribe, subscribe, pop over, see us on Facebook, give us a wee like, a wee follow, that sort of thing. It's all appreciated. You can send us money if you want. But anyway, until the next time, we shall speak to you and on. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.